Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And with this one, I had my mind quite literally blown. Apparently, there is still a first time for a first. With Shadowlands being out for so long, I had not seen a team implement a strategy such as this. And this looked like a really nasty one. So in this clip, I'm going to be facing a Fire Mage, an Affliction Warlock, and a Restoration Druid. Uh, and I was expecting, as my team is running with an Enhancement Shaman and an Arms Warrior, that this Warlock was going to likely have to open up uh, Twitter and make a post uh, asking for some Warlock buffs after this game. But as we jumped into it, uh, we very quickly realized that this team was basically taking zero damage. Uh, and there's a lot contributing to that, so I just wanted to run this game down and show it to you so that maybe you can take it for yourself uh, and run this strategy yourself or know how to combat it in the future. Uh, because usually uh, a warrior cleave or something like this is going to have a pretty good time with a, an affliction warlock, so this was very startling. First off with this team, the warlock just stands in one spot out in the open. You can see them standing to the left there, out in the corner. And I actually think throughout this match that they might only use their portal or gateway maybe even once throughout this fight, which was very surprising. And another very odd component to this composition is that the Fire Mage is playing Necro Lord. This may be the first time I've ever seen this. I mean, this is a specialization for or a covenant for mage that basically nobody plays. It's a write-off. And you can see how they're posted up. The fire mage is just casting fireball with their Necrolord Covenant ability active, uh, while the Affliction Warlock stands in one spot. And I don't know how many Affliction Warlocks you've seen try to stand in one spot for too long of a period of time, but usually they're run over like a freight train and it's goodbye, see you in the next game. Um, but this team just posted up stood in one spot and just spammed out damage. They just railed out as much damage as they possibly could. Uh, and the one thing about this comp is that Necrolord Mage is actually getting buffs in 9.1.5. And I almost kind of wonder if this would have been better with a different specialization of Mage, maybe a Frost Mage, but this Mage even ice blocks a Hex when there's a D-curse on their team. That's how confident they are that they're not going to take any damage. And you can see that the Warlock still has not moved. So at this point, we're, we're just dumbfounded, like what should we do? Well, let's try hitting two different targets, um, which is gonna work out better. Uh, and this is because the Restoration Druid is playing Scenarian Ward as well as Flourish. So if you're only attacking one target as a melee cleave and that target has a Flourished Scenarian Ward, you're not killing that target. So the first thing when you see this type of strategy employed, you gotta get off the Scenarian Ward. You cannot attack into it. That target is not going to take damage. You can still see we're almost three minutes into this game now and the Warlock hasn't moved from that spot. The Mage has effectively not even tried to polymorph. Like this is absolutely mind blowing to me. They're just tanking all the damage and attacking us back uh, and trading evenly, which eventually became a nightmare for me because now I've got to focus more on efficiency. So the way that I'm doing that is by spreading my cooldowns out against an Affliction Warlock. So I'm using Iron Bark on the Warrior, Nature's Swiftness on the Shaman, and then I'm going to line a site at the pillar with a couple of hots. This way I've allocated my resources in a way that it's evenly distributed and every target should be able to survive their attack and their spread damage. Another difficulty of fighting this composition was that I needed to be able to drink. So right now I try to drink, but the mage who is just still standing in one spot, I don't think that... Okay, they used Shimmer. The mage actually used Shimmer. I was going to say, maybe the mage didn't even use Shimmer in this game. Because uh, this game ended up going on for quite a while. Uh, and what was even more hilarious is the end scoreboard on the healing. Like, you, you, will, you will laugh. I didn't even realize it was pointed out to me afterwards, uh, the healing output at the end of this match. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I absolutely couldn't believe it. So we've tried attacking the Warlock. That was a no bueno. Scenarian Ward, Flourish. We, now we're starting to attack the Mage more. Swap beyond Scenarian Ward. The Druid is starting to run out of mana uh, with the result of this strategy, but we are running out even harder um, at, at this point in the game. So I tried to desperately to sit down for a drink. Then they pop their cooldowns like Combustion to scare me away from drinking while their Druid starts running at me. So this is basically a nightmare for me. Uh, I'm still allocating my resources onto multiple targets, so I used Overgrowth on the Shaman. Then I used Adaptive Swarm onto the Warrior. This way I've spread out my heal over time effects so that both targets are a little bit more sturdy. Scenarian Ward into Swiftmen to extend it with the Legendary. And you can see right here that the Warlock just rips out damage. And that Warlock has not moved from that spot. Like, just look at the back corner of that right there. Has that Warlock moved? I, I'm just, I'm trying to keep tabs on it. I don't know if you're keeping tabs on it. I was trying to keep tabs on it because I've never seen a warlock be able to do this 
uh, at least in Shadowlands, right? Like Warlocks are usually just falling over and flopping. Uh, but here, going after the Mage felt a lot better, but it may have been a trap card. Because like I was saying about the end scoreboard of this game, it may end up being a trap card. We start going after the Mage. We may, And remember, this is the Mage that ice blocked a Hex earlier. Um, so we start going after them in Stormbolt. We still can't manage to find a kill. I'm still trying to drink and regenerate mana. I'm punishing people who overextend to stop me from drinking by crowd controlling them with Bash and Cyclone. But ultimately, the, the name of the game, if you're going to be facing this type of composition, is that you are going to have to get a drink. Uh, and to me, the best way to be able to do that, although we actually didn't achieve it in this game, is to make sure that you have defensive cooldowns to utilize when you're drinking. So as the Druid, you're going to run away and drink. Your Shaman is going to use Astral Shift. Your Warrior is going to use Die by the Sword. This is to allow you to get mana. You want to trade defensive cooldowns like that. We don't do that in this specific clip. I think that's ultimately what lost the match uh, because I wasn't able to get mana and I couldn't regenerate. But still, what was just surprising to me uh, more than anything is that this Warlock has not moved from that upper balcony in the back. They are maxing out damage without moving. Um, so if, if, if you're wondering what Affliction Warlock comp you should pick up, maybe you should try picking up a Necro Lord Fire Mage. Um, and a resto druid because this composition was way more sturdy than any other warlock comp I've seen. So we finally give up. We go after the fire mage, but look, fleshcraft from the fire mage, something that I never thought that I would see throw Shadowlands, uh, and they're easily going to just completely walk that off. So now in this position, I'm desperate. I activate Iron Bark and run for a drink. So this is the type of strategy that I was talking about. Use a defensive cooldown to get across the map and try and drink. I see the druid running at me. So I reposition, I see the mage running at me, so I reposition rather than getting found and having to cross the map out of stealth. But with the way that they're posted up, it's so hard. The warlock's still near this side. I try to sit down without him noticing, but we don't have many defensive cooldowns, right? So my shaman doesn't have astral shift here and I'm gonna begin to panic, right? Combustion, we're just stepping foot into dampening. I was trying to sit to drink for like two seconds. I couldn't leave them alone for two seconds. This is how much of a nightmare it was. But once again, in this position, I split my cooldowns up. I overgrowth the warrior, and I snarian worded the shaman. This way, they've got about equal, equal healing output between the two of them to deal with the massive amount of spread damage. Here, I stack with my team for chain harvest, so it's going to bounce the heal to multiple members. And a sheep! The first sheep of the game! It's like six minutes into the game! They're, they're, they're pressing sheep! I, I, I thought that this whole game went through without them using sheep uh, one time, but it took six minutes. They, they had to do a sheep. So I can imagine that if they weren't fighting a team, like my team is top tier caliber rank one players. If they're fighting other teams, like if you're playing at lower brackets yourself, you might not even have to press sheep. Yeah, you might. You honestly might not even have to press sheep uh, uh, to win your games. Like this, this comp was super nasty. Um, so now I'm out of mana again. Their druid's drinking. It's a nightmare. I'm trying to figure out where he is. I can't, so I just try to crowd control the warlock. And this is where things start to spiral out of control. I should not have tried to cast an ability that could be interrupted. Uh, but with zero mana, I was very desperate. So I use Iron Bark Scenarian Ward on the warrior, and my shaman uses Astral Shift. This way our resources, again, are split evenly between both of the targets. Very important against the Affliction Warlock specifically, and with how this team is playing, they are just spamming out as much damage as they can physically do. And they're just completely overwhelming us, uh, and I'm just out of mana at this point. Like, what am I really going to do? I have to fake multiple interrupts. I'm out of mana. They're dogpiling on top of me. They're able to confidently drink, and it's just no way that we're going to be able to recover from that position. It was just an insane amount of damage. And I like I got to pause it when I see the scoreboard because when we look at this scoreboard, it just be, it just looks so nasty. Like this Fire Mage, 900,000 healing. I have not seen this. 1.4 million damage. He's actually able to keep up on damage just by standing still, turreting fireballs as a Necro Lord Fire Mage. Their Affliction Warlock, just by standing still, again, I don't think that this Warlock used Portal the entire game. You have to, you have to tell me otherwise from watching here again on this recording, but I'm pretty sure this Warlock didn't use Gateway once, didn't use Demonic Portal once, and they used one Sheep that they probably didn't really even need to use because they ice blocked a random Hex at the start of the game like eight minutes ago. So this team did so much healing. They were so tanky. They just stood still. Mage Lock Druid, like this comp in the next patch when Necro Lord Mage gets buffed, maybe we were sleeping on this. I don't know. I, I don't know how it's possible that we were sleeping on this, but now with the Covenant swapping coming in 9.1.5, if you're curious about switching over as a mage, you probably should at least give it a try because this game completely dumbfounded, overwhelmed, 
couldn't figure out what to do. Tried trading cooldowns and sitting down for drinks. Never felt comfortable. Couldn't pressure them back. It was it was an absolute nightmare, um, which I wasn't expecting right at the start of this. We're thinking, oh, Warlock, we got a warrior. It's over. I'm sorry, Warlock. You can go to the forums. You can ask for a buff. It's probably the best you're going to do. After the game, hands up in the air. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So what do, you, what do you think? Are you going to try this out? This seems to me like an insane composition. Uh, but other than that, thank you for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you like this type of content. I do my best to update regularly with any incoming changes to the game, my thoughts and opinions, as well as guides that are very useful. I've been told by people who have watched my videos that their rating has gone up uh, and they've been able to improve as a player overall and have a better experience. So if you're looking for that type of resource, then this is a perfect place to hit that subscribe button button so you can get up to date as soon as possible. And other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. I will see you in the next one.